Hey, you guys, I'm Andrea Olson with the Good Eye for Free podcast. And today I'm going to share um, episode 163, which is actually an interview with Katie Ferraro of Baby Led Weaning. And um, she has a podcast that I was on, and now I'm on her, or she's on my podcast now. So this will actually be a video interview for the first time in a long time. Yay! I'm going to introduce it now and record this for the podcast, and then we will share the interview with you here. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Go Diaper Free Podcast, where we're all about helping you potty your baby as early as birth. I'm Andrea Olson, mom of five babies, all e-seed from birth, all out of diapers by walking. This is episode 163, Baby Led Weaning, an interview with Katie Ferraro, how to start solids with your baby with BLW. So you can read the written version of today's show over at goodiperfree.com forward slash 163, where I will also link to all the things I mentioned in today's episode, especially where to find Katie after you're done listening. I will also be replying to comments over there. So come on by when you're finished. All right. Welcome to the show. So if you have been following me for any length of time, you know that I do not interview people on my podcast. Uh, Lori Bouquet is the last person I interviewed, and that was many, many years ago. And she was the only one, actually. <laughs> to be honest, I'm a busy person. I homeschool five children. I have two businesses. And I also like to do mom things, leaving extremely little time to coordinate a scheduled conversation with anyone, especially an interview and including my own mother. I am a typical mommy flake and a solopreneur. However, Katie Ferraro interviewed me about elimination communication a few weeks ago for her podcast, Baby Led Weaning Made Easy. And it was so good, and I've done some baby led weaning with some of my children as well, that I felt compelled to share her topic with you guys on my podcast. EC and baby led weaning play very nicely together and actually fall under that same parenting umbrella of, hey, respect my natural biology and my rhythms and listen to me, mom or dad. So here is a link to her free workshop in case you want to check it out and learn more. Baby Led Weaning for Beginners. It's at babyledweaning.co. And definitely check out her podcast at blwpodcast.com and her Instagram at babyledweanteam. And that is all linked on my show notes at godiperfree.com forward slash 163, which also you can come by at the end of the interview and leave a comment or a question for us there. So on with the interview. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. It's Andrea with the Go Diaper Free Podcast, and I have a guest today. This is the first time I've had a guest since I interviewed Lori Bouquet in like 2015. No joke, because I've been busy having babies, and it's just easier to do it by myself. But I was interviewed by Katie Ferraro from the Baby Led Wean team a couple weeks ago for her podcast. It's Baby Led Weaning Made Easy. And I was so interested in what she had to share. And it's so relevant to EC because it's the other end of things. We cover the exit and she covers the entrance. So I wanted to have her on my show so you guys could learn um, on this podcast as well. So please welcome Katie. Katie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm, I've also been really busy having babies, but I love doing interview podcasts because the other person does all the talking and I just get to listen and learn. You know what? Yeah, and like if my topic weren't so abstract and and different. I think a little niche, I would say. A niche, yeah. But I think yours is a little niche. We both argue about whose is weirder, baby led weaning or elimination communication. And I think you voted that I won. I think you're, I wouldn't say you're weirder. I'd say you're less mainstream and people have like never heard of what you're doing. Like I had never, like, I didn't mean I, the first time I heard about you was on the Amy Porterfield podcast. So I was like, this chick does something slightly stranger than me. I have got to meet her because it's so, it's like unbelievable. Like people, when they see babies feeding themselves, they're really shocked at first. They're like, well, I get that. Like babies eat, they're just eating differently. But like babies don't go to the bathroom in the potty as young as you tell me that they can. That's why I was just fascinated by your world. Yeah, totally. Well, likewise. And when I first had my first baby, Kaiva, like oh, 11 years ago, his birthday just passed. Um, we did baby led weeding, but I didn't really know a lot about it. But when I heard about it, I was like, okay, I'm on board. I'm doing EC. I'm co-sleeping. I'm baby wearing. I'm doing attachment parenting. I'm exclusively breastfeeding and I'm going to do baby led weeding. Like I went for it all, all cylinders. So, um, I'm excited to educate my audience about this today and see if they want to do something. I think a lot of them are already turned on, but I 
to this topic, but I also want them to be able to find you. So everybody, if you don't make it to the end of the interview, which won't be very long because my podcast is always pretty short and so is yours. Um, you can find Katie at, at baby led wean team on Instagram. And that's where all the action is. So Katie, tell me about your massive amount of children and their spacing. You're one to talk, first of all. <laughs> I, um, I have five for those of you who don't know me. And you uh, that's what I love about you because you just get it. We can skip over a lot of the other stuff. But I'm the mom of seven small children. So I had seven kids, three and under at one point a few years ago. And they're all now seven and under. Um, I have a singleton who I really struggled with spoon feeding with. I'm a dietitian. My mom is a dietitian. I love food. And when I went to do traditional spoon feeding with my oldest, I was like, this is terrible. She hates me. She hated eating. Like meal times were a downright battleground. And at the height of my feeding frustrations with her as a baby, I found out I was pregnant with quadruplets. So my husband and I had been doing fertility. We knew the risk of multiples was there, but definitely not four. It was not planned that way. And I remember the first thing, like when I saw those four babies on the ultrasound, just thinking, you know, how am I going to feed four babies at one time when I can't even feed the one baby that I have at home right now? So fast forward, I ended up going 34 weeks with quadruplets, which um, average gestation for quads is 28 weeks. So I was preparing myself for, there's a 50% chance of major handicap with quadruplets. I was preparing myself to shut down all of my in-person business. I was a private practice dietitian at the time. I'm like, I can't be working 60 hours a week. I'm going to have two, at least two severely disabled children and miracle upon miracle. They went 34 weeks. They were all born healthy between two and three pounds. Um, but they were in the NICU for a while. And so while they were in the NICU, I really was like, okay, before they come home, like what's the thing stressing me out right now that I want to change in our family life when these babies come home, if they're healthy and even come home and it was feeding. And I thought there has to be a better alternative to than force feeding and pushing an arbitrary amount of period, disgusting food in your child's mouth and like surprise, they don't like eating. And then they become a picky toddler. I did a lot of research. I'm also a college nutrition professor at UC San Francisco and the university of San Diego and kind of leaned on my colleagues um, in pediatrics and maternal and child health and looking for alternatives. And they're really, you know, I discovered baby led weaning, which is an alternative to traditional spoon feeding, whereby babies start to feed themselves age appropriate foods at six months of age. And I was like, so I, I don't have to do it. Like they can feed themselves. And when the quads were six months adjusted age, we started baby led weaning whole hog. They ate a hundred foods before they turned one. I was sharing a lot on Instagram to begin with, but it had been like such a transformational experience for our family that I actually ended up switching the entire focus of my nutrition career to focus exclusively on baby led weaning. And then they were 18 months old and we had another set of twins, which I had wanted one more, but I'm one, I'm one of six and I like even numbers. So we had twins at the end, number six and seven, Gus and Hannah. Um, so we had at that point, seven kids, three and under, but by then, because the quads were eating and they were independent eaters and they weren't picky, like it was so much less stressful than you might have imagined. I mean, it wasn't peaceful, but um, I, I ended up kind of refining this whole approach of helping families feed their babies a hundred foods before they turned one. So with Gus and Hannah, I did the hundred first foods program and really tweaked it. And now I've helped tens of thousands of families introduce their babies to solid foods using the hundred first foods approach to baby led weaning that I teach. And I run the largest digital community that's dedicated to baby led weaning. That's all we do is starting solids safely with baby led weaning for six to 12 month old babies. And safely is the key. So what about choking? Okay. So parents are always got to ask um, parents like, well, sounds cool, except my baby's going to choke and die. And we actually have research. And I, one of the things I really pride myself on in my podcast is I only interview credentialed experts. There's mm -hmm. so much bogus information about feeding out there on uh, Instagram sites and blog posts and well-intentioned people who have no business giving advice on what infants should be eating, especially because the risk of choking is high if you do it wrong. However, I love having the researchers on my podcast because they bring out the research that says, listen, we know that actually babies who are at the highest risk of choking are those who have tried the least amount of textures. So the more finger foods you offer, the least likely your baby is to choke. And we also know that there's no higher rate of choking with baby led weaning compared to traditional spoon feeding, provided that the parents are educated about reducing choking risk. So, so much of my education is about, you know, parents will say, are apples safe? Apples can be deadly and they can be a totally safe baby led weaning food. It's all in the preparation method. So we show parents, you know, how you prepare an apple safely for baby led weaning. And it's not cutting it up really small. That's what parents think. That actually increases choking risk. So there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's one of the reasons why, I, I mean, I love podcasts because I'm always doing two things at once, but I really love video, YouTube, Instagram, because we can show parents like, this is how you do it. And here's the baby eating safely. And parents are like, oh, 
Makes sense. I can do that. You don't have to be a gourmet cook to peel and core and poach an apple and offer it in the right shape and size to a baby out of the right type of bowl. Right. So what is your YouTube channel? Is it the same as your Instagram? Oh, when is this coming out? Because the YouTube channel launches <laughs> next month. So we can, we can totally put a little edit at the bottom. So we will, I'm going to link to wherever her YouTube channel is at the time of you guys listening to this podcast, because you know, things. Are and I didn't want to do YouTube. I don't like YouTube. I think it's a waste of time. Sorry. Cause you have to actually like watch and listen at the same time. Yes. But everyone's like, you need to do TikTok. I'm like, you guys, I'm 42 years old. And I have five fabulous younger women who work with me who make me do lots of things I don't want to do, but we all decided on YouTube because it is such a powerful platform. And because it's so easy for parents to find the information that they need. As much as I love Instagram, we spend so much time on content there. It's not really searchable in the way that parents need. Like if you're going to feed your baby liver right now, you don't have all day to be scrolling around the Instagram site. So part yeah, of re the reason why we're doing YouTube. Yeah, I exactly. I the same level of resistance. I'm the same age as you are. Yep. <laughs> like, but I mean, I also it. a lot of dads use YouTube um, and we have a big community of parents who are like, can you just convince my husband or my partner or my father-in-law or my dad that this is safe? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So we do actually a lot of content for dads um, and the dads get on board. When the babies start eating meat, we always do meat on day four. We introduce five new foods a week that's 20 foods a month. In five months, your baby's eating a hundred foods. We do meat on the fourth day of baby led weaning. I usually do lamb or carnitas or something just kind of out there that the dads are like, wait, what? My baby's eating meat. Like if the family eats meat, it's usually like that's when the dad starts to get interested. So, so here's the other good thing because dads will like this, but also so will moms that we're raising, our goal is to raise toddlers who are not picky. So by the time we get to toddlerhood, we're not just, oh, we have to make them macaroni and cheese, they won't eat anything else. No, you Actually, know, you got eat five kids. Food. You can't short order cook. No, no, I, I, I refuse. Like if you don't like it, then you're going to be hungry this meal. And that's how I am <laughs> because I have to have good boundaries with so many children. Like, you know, we'll get overtaken. So um, this prevents pickiness. What a, What's the other good thing about it? So it helps. I, I just want to clarify it because I always kind of cringe on people, not you, but other like feeding professionals to say it prevents picky eating. There's no way to prevent picky eating. There's some degree of food neophobia or picky eating that will set in in the second year of life. But what I always tell parents is traditional spoon feeding by the age of 12 months, your baby's had about 10 or 15 foods. If you lose those 10 or 15 foods to picky eating, you are up a creek. Yeah, if, you're, yeah. if your baby's had a hundred foods by the time they turn one and you lose 10 or 15 of those foods to pick eating, guess what? No freaking big deal. Like you still got 85 or 90 foods the baby can eat. So it helps reduce the severity of picky eating, but it greatly expands the number of flavors and tastes and textures and foods that babies are exposed to. And that's what the research shows us. It helps reduce picky eating. But back to what you're saying, it helps you raise an independent eater. Our goal here with your approach to toilet training and my approach to self-feeding is that we're raising independent children who can do the things for themselves that they were anatomically and biologically designed to do as long as we're doing it safely and at the right developmental stage. Right. And for my, for my crowd, it's at birth is safe and developmentally appropriate. You won't psychologically damage your child if you potty train from birth, but you can start anywhere from zero to 18 months with baby led weaning. Six months is what you recommend as starting. Um, and people think, oh, they're going to choke, but they're actually not if you do it right. And then also the thing with EC is if you do it right, if you're not strapping your child to the toilet, waiting for them to poop and putting a suppository in like they did in the early um, 20th century, then yeah, you're, you're, if you don't do that, you're good. You're not going to damage your child. So there are definitely in both of our areas of expertise, we've got some guidelines, but we're following nature's design. We're following baby's design, the way they're created. And then we've got independent eaters on your end. We've got independent pottiers on our end. And what you said about all seven of yours being easier to handle because you, they could all feed themselves. I had the exact same experience with all five of mine because they could potty themselves. Yeah. So it's so relieving. Like you can handle more children if they are independent. And I kind of agree with you. And again, big family people say that, like I'm from a right. big family. So I think it's other people are like, you're crazy. But I mean, we have family friends, certainly. And I see this a lot in my community. They're like, oh my gosh, people come over and like brag about my kid eating. And I'm like, I never brag about my own kids because I think they're a lot and kind of annoying sometimes, but like, I'm so proud of the way they eat. And some of that is on me. Like I have to provide the wholesome foods that they eat. It doesn't just magically show up on the table. And that's a lot of work, but if I'm cooking for one, I might as well be cooking for seven and then have a few friends over. And then, you know, like you got to do it anyway. I prefer just to do it for a crowd. But the fact, like if I was making that food and they didn't eat it, 
no, thank you. Like they eat the food and part of it's because they're hungry. And uh, I, we have this discussion too, because babies, we don't feed babies because of hunger and they're learning how to recognize and respond to hunger and fullness cues. But, but for toddlers, we need them to feel some casual hunger. And I have so many friends and colleagues who are scared to death of letting their kids feel hungry. Yeah. What do you think? Well, how are they ever going to know to respond to their hunger cues? But snacks. Exactly. Do we snack? Do we do snacks? Do we do I'll blow your mind. We're a snack-free household. And I I don't broach that subject a lot with my baby-led weaning audience because we all agree. And if you're a feeding expert, you know, babies do not need snacks. When you see other like, Instagram accounts saying a baby needs to have a snack. No, they don't. You want to know the best way to sabotage a toddler's diet is to train them how to eat snacks when they're a baby. Like we don't need snacks. And my, I'm, I'm on a pretty tight schedule. So I understand the benefit of snacks. They're a Band-Aid or a stopgap if we fall off of the schedule. Like if we're going to my mom's house, she puts out a huge bowl of snacks and is like, I can't believe they don't eat dinner. I'm like, because you just put out a big box of crackers. Know, right? At my own house, I know a time we're eating dinner and it's 5.30. And so you're not having anything for a snack so that you're hungry at 5.30. So you can go to bed at seven so I can have some peace and quiet. Like it's all interrelated. I have the exact same schedule. We are like kindred spirits here. That's awesome. I mean, I think it's important to have really good boundaries, but that is even more than I'm doing. Like we definitely do snacks and I'm going to have to talk to you later about my kids are getting bigger and bigger kids do need snacks for sure. But, but guess what? One-year-olds do not need to be eating goldfish all day long. My two-year-old eats all day and she's like a tank. She's hardcore. And and it drives me nuts because I'm like, could you please just stop eating for five seconds? Okay. Tell me about poop. What happens to baby's poop when they do baby led weaning? As versus doing processed solids. Is it the same? Is it different? No one's ever asked me about poop. I love it. Thank you. Well, parents always wonder about constipation. So constipation is a natural side effect of your, your switching. Think about it. The babies only had breast milk or formula in their system for six months as they should, but now you're starting to introduce these different compounds like fiber and different types of proteins um, and different, you know, plant foods and animal foods. And so there's a lot going on in the gut. The gut is a big muscle. It's learning, it's exercising. And you're, you're a little sore when you start exercising after muscle you haven't used in a while. So just think about it that way. And yes, you you will expect to see changes, especially in stool patterns. Parents will freak out. My baby used to poop two times a day. Yeah, guess what? Your baby used to sleep four times a day. And as they get older, they don't do that either. So like things will change and that's typical. Um, but we, you know, we do expect to see even, you know, little pieces of food in the poop. I was just feeding, working with, a, doing a 10 day series, baby led weaning on a boat with a family that lives on a boat and raising their family on a boat. And then mom was like, yeah, the baby had lamb. And she's like, I found lamb in the poop. And I was like, you know what? If you look closely at your own poop, you'd probably find lamb in there too. Like we, we can expect that there are changes. Um, your baby may have a little bit of constipation. Um, and we generally, I might do a lot of teaching about what tr- typical constipation is with the transition to solid foods versus problematic. Um, you know, if you see blood in the stool, we feed, we do beets um, very early on in baby led weaning and oh, that will that cause the, like, yeah, the stool parents. to look bloody and parents will freak out. Like, no, that's beets. That's not blood, but in there, been there, done that, been like, oh my gosh, what is or the that? asparagus are like, oh my God, my child's dying. Like, nope, that's just. <laughs> that's just an amino acid. They can't break down much information from poop. That's why I wanted to know, is it different from doing like baby food or the pouch thing? Well, you doing when you don't have fibers in your diet and you don't have real plant foods, you're essentially feeding your gut. So prebiotics, right? They're the food that fuels the probiotics, the healthy bacteria in your gut. We know that with processed and packaged food, which that's what commercial baby food is, that we're actually introducing the wrong type of bacteria. It actually is the, you can contribute to your baby's healthy gut biome by offering real wholesome foods. We have to prepare them safely so the baby can swallow them. But parents sometimes worry, gosh, my baby can't digest these foods. Actually, your baby's anatomy is equipped to digest the entirety of foods that adults eat at three months of age. But we don't feed three-month-old babies real foods because they can't swallow them safely. And also nutritionally, they don't need them. But your baby can digest all of these foods. We just need to offer it to them safely. And we should expect to see um, some changes in the gut. But certainly, if you're on pouches all day long, which have, you know, that's just glorified applesauce. Apparently, my baby's eating kale as they're sucking it out of a pouch. That's not kale. That's green-colored applesauce. And there's no developmental milestone that says babies need to learn how to suck out of a pouch. They can't see that. They can't touch that. That's not what the actual food is like. Plus you're wasting three or $4 per pouch, three or four times a day. I mean, it's an astronomical amount of money for something that's not even real food and happens to be fueling an unhealthy gut microbiome for your baby. Yeah, absolutely. And and the same thing with easy, we offer the potty, even though the baby can't sit upright on their own or sit, go walk over to the potty and sit down, but they're still developmentally able 
and communicating about wanting to go hygienically outside. Of and you know, what's so crazy. I was just thinking about you the other day because after college, I was a Peace Corps volunteer and I lived in Nepal where they don't, they didn't have diapers. They didn't have cloth diapers. And when, if you were fortunate enough to be on a Jeep ride and a baby was going to the bathroom, they just passed the baby and held them out the window and the baby went to the bathroom out the window. And I never thought about it because I wasn't in the age of like having kids then. But now when people say to me, like baby led weaning is nothing new. This is a centuries old approach to letting children eat modified versions of the same foods the rest of the family eats. Like, what do you think we did? What did cave mom feed her baby before the advent of commercial baby food and a crazy aisle at Target that's just a bunch of packaged and processed food that was made before your baby was even born? Like what you're teaching with EC is just a natural progression of what families have been doing for generations. It's just only recently did we decide to spend a lot of money and fill the landfills up with disposable diapers, right? It's almost the exact same issue, the same problem. It's all fueled by all this money that somebody's making off of, hey, you really need us. You can't raise your baby. And scaring well, parents. That's the that's the cool thing them. about baby led weaning. Show. Yep. You're it's one of the few, yeah. it is one of the few things, baby led weaning that are appeals to a second time parent, right? First time mom, I'm going to put everything on the registry. I'm going to, I'm going to need this thing that gives me an alarm if the baby rolls over and this thing that I suck food through a mesh pouch because I'm scared to give my baby real food. By the second baby, you, you realize all the baby needs is to sleep and eat and go to the bathroom and you don't need any of that stuff. And you kind of go back to basics. And a lot of my parents are struggling with a picky eating toddler because they did traditional spoon feeding and they don't want to replicate that. And so they're looking for an alternative, just like I was myself. And that's when they stumble upon baby led weaning. And they're like, oh, this makes a lot more sense. And you need a lot less stuff. EC. They've potty trained at three, their first one. And they're like, I am never doing that again. That was terrible. Um, EC, a lot of people say, oh, it takes too much time. How can we possibly do that? Baby led weaning sounds like it takes a lot of time too. But what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing you say is it takes time up front so you're learning, the parents learning, you're introducing a hundred foods over six months. You are, you are having to think, having to stop, having to actually be present with your child, which is great, by the way. I think most of my listeners already do that anyway, but this is another part of it that means a lot because it's an investment. And then later on, you reap the benefits of this independence and having a child who's just, I think, generally healthy, healthier, um, mm-hmm. has the opportunity to be healthier than someone And I always tell parents, you have to feed this child for the next 17 and a half years of his life. You can struggle three meals a day, plus all the snacks times 17 and a half years, or you can do the work up front to build the healthy foundation so that your child does have a wholesome relationship with food. And, you know, baby led weaning speaks to a lot of larger issues, especially among women and females who are men are important, but women are primarily the primary feeders in most households. And they will readily admit that most of them do not have healthy relationships with food. And they'll say things like, I don't want to see my food issues replicated in my child. And I say, listen, you know, this whole hundred first foods approach is actually a way for you to expand your comfort with trying new foods. I, we have lots of parents who are in eating disorder recovery and say, you know, this was the first time I felt comfortable around food. Not that it cured their eating disorder, but the point is we our children are blank slates. They, they, they are not the ones who drive themselves through the drive-thru at McDonald's. It's us who do it. And we can also do the opposite, which is to help babies establish a helpful relationship with food. And I have families all the time. I know my own husband. Um, His weight is not what you would want as a dietitian sometimes. But he's like, listen, I love when you do baby led weaning because I always lose weight because we're never allowed to eat out because at the beginning, you do have to make the own, your own food and right. and we're eating real foods and we're eating at meal times because that's what's important for the baby and the whole family to do. And that's what I love about baby led weaning is it does incorporate the whole family at meal time. Even if you don't fancy yourself a fantastic chef, like you can learn to eat more whole grains and eat a variety of foods and try as many vegetables as you do fruit so your kid doesn't just end up wanting pouches all the time. So, so baby led weaning, brings families together. EC does too. It's a totally connective process. I love that. You guys listening, please, please, please go and learn from Katie and her team. And I wanted to ask you, what is the best, fastest way for all of my listeners to learn baby led weaning from you? Well, I teach a free online workshop each week called Baby Led Weaning for Beginners. It's all about how to get your baby to eat 100 foods without you having to spoon feed purees or buy pouches. I give everyone on that free workshop a copy of my 100 first foods list. So you can start knocking out those foods with your baby and you can sign up for a this week's workshop times if you go to blwworkshop.com. Awesome. BLW workshop. Let me just double check that. that. Double, yeah, we're going to double uh-huh. check that. Um. Yeah. And while you're looking that up, we have the annual Go Diaper Free Week every April after Earth Day. Um, Katie also has an annual event. And I wanted to know when is that? I already know, but I want you to tell my listeners when your event is. 
Well, can I tell them first why I have National Baby Led Weaning Day? Because again, I heard you on the Amy Porterfield podcast and you were like, I made Go Diaper Free Day and I made it the day before or after Earth Day. I can't remember. It's it's Go Diaper Free Week. And go, oh, of course after you would have a week. Day. Sorry. Yeah, we're, we're like a partying. I'm going to have a week next week, next year. Yeah, Hang on. Do a whole week. Okay, wait, but so the reason why it on Amy's podcast I did, and then you made your own. I made my own because I was like, okay, having a day or a week is like whatever, so passe. Everyone does that. She has a reason why her day or her week was the right reason. So our team sat down, we're like, I'm like, I had a baby like weaning day. And a girl on our team, like the most junior girl who never speaks up because she's like our creative genius, was like, it should be July 1st because all you ever do is tell parents to wait six months until your baby is ready to start solid foods. Don't start at four months, don't start at five months. So the six month mark into the year, if January 1st is the first day of the year, is July 1st. So we made July 1st National Baby Led Weaning Day. We we got Jill Rapley, who is the founding godmother of Baby Led Weaning. She's the co-author of the original Baby Led Weaning book. She's like Mrs. Baby Led Weaning. And she got on board with Baby Led Weaning Day. And we did a ton of celebration around it, really celebrating this transition to solid foods. Because we celebrate like some really dumb things in a baby's like life. And you know, other food cultures celebrate, for example, and um, I lived in Nepal, right? We had Hindu food culture. They would do a rice feeding ceremony to celebrate the baby eating their first rice. Like, why are we not celebrating our babies making this important trans? transition instead of just being so scared of it. So that's the whole point behind baby led weaning day, which is July 1st. And I just want to thank you because it wouldn't be a thing if it weren't for your inspiration with your movement in your week. Oh, thanks. And we should both thank Amy for having me on her show. That uh, oh, I know I hear about my business journey and how I got here. Definitely. You should link to that episode on the show notes I'm for this to. because it was oh. so good. Okay. Also, um, I, did you find normally out? type everything? Yeah, I gave you guys the wrong <laughs> word. If you want to come to my workshop, it's babyledweaning.co. Oh, baby. There you go. Weaning.co. Or we're on Instagram at babyledwean team. Come join the movement. Get your baby to eat 100 foods. You can do this again. You got to do it for 17 and a half years. You might as well have fun doing it and help your baby build a solid foundation with foods with baby led weaning. Absolutely. And I'm not done. So I'm going to try to meet. I'm not probably like not going to beat you because I'm 42, but. I'm definitely, I'm divorced as everybody listening knows. And Best I, email subject line ever. I'm getting a divorce. I know. It was such a good email. She's like, I already know because I read your email and it was awesome. And, and I thought that was pretty cool. So if you didn't get that email, write us and I'll send you that email because it was a pretty fun. You're not email. getting her emails. Well, you're I clearly mean, not on her email list because she sends you like one a day, which is amazing. <laughs> your, you, your prolific email output is really, really mind boggling. Well, you know, I have 20 arms after all, because I have so many children. It. But if I do have, and I do want to have another one or two, um, and I haven't done my boyfriend announcement podcast yet. But, <gasps> oh, wait, wait, it might come out. No, I think this is going to come out first. So you guys sneak preview that I have met somebody who does want children, who's always wanted five to eight children. So guess what? Next time I have a baby, I'm going to do baby led weaning. Right. Oh, I love listening that. to you, Katie. I think I probably, probably I will fly to you and do your baby's first 10 days. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'm I am sure. definitely done, but I do want to say I, okay. It, people always say to me, Oh, I wish I knew about baby led weaning when I had a baby. Like I have like all these like awesome grandmas that follow me. They're like, I don't even have grandkids. I just like love watching babies eat, <laughs> totally. but I, I really too. mean it. Like my twin, my youngest are twins are three. And I am like, some things are important to me, like food and work and like us playing outside, but like some things I'm so lazy on, like brushing teeth and learning how to use the bathroom. And I never even like thought about getting a kid out of diapers until three. And you totally changed my mind. I, I, I knew you could like maybe do it earlier. I just thought I was being lazy. If I had more babies, I would do EC. And I tell parents about it all the time. I'm like, if you think baby like weaning is cool, you should check it out, out EC and you should definitely do it with your next They're baby. They're both game changers, you guys. They are game changers for your parenting experience. You will have a way different experience. And I now have discovered that I only did baby led weaning half ass. So I'm going to do it even better when I get an if, hopefully, God willing, I get another chance to do it and I'm going to follow it. So I'm going to do both and I'll do EC with that one so you can live vicariously through me and you don't have to have an eighth child. <laughs> I, I am, uh, with, uh, the uh, operation uh, is everything is done with uh, having more babies, but good, when, good. I, you know, it's funny because I get to feed everyone else's babies and we have like yes. so many amazing babies around us all the time that I don't like after my quads, people are like, I can't believe you went out and had two twins after quads. And I was like, I didn't feel done. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's I just, what you mean. I don't and my husband that. was like, if you don't feel done, then I don't feel done. Cause I don't really feel either way. I was like, okay, great. And then after the twins, not because it was so hard, but they were wonderful. Um, but, and also twins are 
half as hard as quadruplet. So I was like loving it with the twins. I really felt done. And I think, you know, when you're done and I am so in love with the fact that you don't feel done yet. I do not feel done. And I actually dreamt about a baby last fall and I was still, I was like, "Mm, this couldn't possibly be whose baby is this? Like, I don't even know. So I have seen the light and I hope that I get a chance to implement this. And meanwhile, all of you who are listening who are pregnant and have little babies and maybe they're six months, maybe they're even after six months. I don't think you can, you can't go wrong by starting nope. after six months, right? So anytime, yeah. please go and visit Katie at Baby Led Wean Team and go take that workshop at babyledweaning.co. We will send me all the links, Katie, and I will put all the links in the blog post. This will also be on YouTube and the podcast. So you guys put comments below. Um, If you have any questions about anything, definitely go to the show notes. I'll link to those as well. Um, Thank you so much for being. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be a guest. I hope I, um, you know, met the bar. You you don't have a lot of guests. So this is pretty cool. I have no bar for it, but like you just blew me away. And I know all of you guys listening, aren't you excited? We're all doing like Um, silent claps because babies are sleeping. So (laughs) we really appreciate it. And we look forward to following you and everybody hop on board the baby led weaning train. It is so important, just like EC as an exposure technique for your baby. So let's do this. Katie, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. It was great talking with you. Thank you. Bye. Wow. That was so awesome. Thank you again, Katie, for this wonderfully informative interview. Hope to talk to you again soon. You guys, please comment over at the show notes at godiperfree.com forward slash 163 right now. Have you tried baby led weaning or are you going to try it now that you know about it? How has it gone if you've been doing it? I really look forward to reading your questions, your comments, and your stories over there. And again, it's godiperfree.com forward slash 163, where you can find all the links for all of the things that Katie has shared with me to share with you. Until next time, happy pottying. I'm Andrea Olson, and you've been listening to the Go Diaper Free podcast at godiperfree.com. See you soon. All right, great. So please comment below. Have you done baby led weaning? Is this the first time you've heard about it? Are you going to try it? I look forward to hearing that and please hit the bell and subscribe so I can let you know when the next video is out. Take care. Mm -hmm.